Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this morning's ceremony. Today's ceremony will be an outdoor ceremony, so covers should be worn. Throughout the ceremony, you will be given cues to stand and be seated at the appropriate times. As an outdoor ceremony, saluting during honors and the national anthem is required for all military members. Our civilian guests are invited to place their right hand over their heart and all veterans in attendance have the option to salute. Again, we request that you silence all electronic devices for the duration of today's event. Once again, thank you. On behalf of the Chief of Staff, the United States Air Force, welcome to the Headquarters Pacific Air Force's Change of Command. Thank you for joining us. Today you will witness a rare event in which multiple authorities and responsibilities are transferred through the Change of Command ceremony. With eight simple words and the passing of the flag, the command of Pacific Air Forces and the responsibility of commanding the Pacific Command Joint Air Force component will transfer from General Kenneth S. Wilsbach to General Kevin B. Schneider. Simultaneously, Chief Master Sergeant Kathleen M. McCool will assume responsibilities from Chief Master Sergeant David R. Wolf as the Pacific Air Force's Command Chief, serving as Senior Enlisted Leader to General Schneider. The presiding officials for today's ceremony are General David W. Alvin, Chief of Staff, United States Air Force and Admiral John C. Aquilino, Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command. The ceremony you will witness today is a time-honored tradition dating back to the 18th century, during the reign of Frederick the Great of Prussia. At that time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each particular unit. To this and its commanders, the soldiers of the unit would dedicate their loyalty and trust. When a change of command was to take place, the flag was passed to the individual assuming command. This gesture was accomplished in front of the entire unit so all could see and witness their new leader assuming this dutiful position. The leader who possessed the flag also held the soldier's allegiance. This symbolic tradition has survived throughout military history. At this time, we would like to recognize some of our distinguished guests. Please hold your applause till the end. With us today is Admiral Aquilino's wife, Laura, General Wilsbach's wife, Cindy, General Schneider's wife, Lordy, Lori, apologies, General Schneider's daughters, Annalise and Abigail, General Schneider's parents, Mike and Maureen Schneider, General Schneider's sister, Megan. Performing the duties of the Undersecretary of the Air Force, the Honorable Kristen Jones and her husband, Harry. The Commander, United States Pacific Fleet, Admiral Samuel Paparo. The Commander, United States Army, Pacific, General Charles Flynn and his wife Kathleen. Former Chief of Staff, Japan Air Self-Defense Force and President of the Japan America Air Force Goodwill Association, General Marumo Yoshinari, Japan Air Self-Defense Force, retired and his wife Midori. Former Chief of Staff, Japan Air Self-Defense Force, General Izutsu Shunji, Japan Air Self-Defense Force, retired and his wife Yuko. Former Commander, United States Army Forces Command, General David Bramlett, United States Army retired, and his wife, Nora. The Commander, United States Marine Corps Forces, Pacific Lieutenant General William Journey, and his wife, Sue. Representing the Air, representing the Japan Air Self-Defense Force, the Commander, Air Defense Command, Lieutenant General Suzuki Yasuhiko. Representing the Republic of Korea, Air Force, the Air Combat Commander, Major General Kim Jun-ho. Former Commander, Air Support Command, Lieutenant General Yamada Masashi, Japan Air Self-Defense Force retired, and his wife Mitsuhi. Pacific Air Forces also welcomes all General, Flag Officers, Consul Generals, Community Civic Leaders, our Military Leaders, friends and family who have traveled here today to witness this memorable occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the playing of military honors, presentation of colors, singing of the national anthem, and Hawaii Pono E.
present the colors. The command chaplain, Colonel James Hamill. I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon us gathered here to witness the change of command between General Kenneth Wilsbach and General Kevin Schneider. The commander of Pacific Air Forces wields the bluntest instruments of peace. Billions of people in this region of the world are beneficiaries of their steady resolve. We thank General Wilsbach for his passion, his focus, and his humanity. Be with him and Cindy as they move on to lead and care for the great airmen of Air Combat Command. Shower your wisdom upon General Schneider 
as he assumes the mantle of leadership here in the Pacific. May he and Lori continue the security of this command and the resiliency of our PACAF airmen. Lord, bless our country, our elected leaders, and our military leaders. May we continue to be the peacemakers you call us to be. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Chaplain Hamill. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John C. Aquilino. Aloha. Uh, first cruiser and Cindy, I'm honored to be able to be a part of this today. Thank you for letting us come. Thanks for letting Laura and Jess uh, witness as well. This is really uh, an amazing day for both uh, Indo-Pacific Command, for the Wilsbach family, for the Schneider family, and overall for the PACAF team. There's so many, and if I miss you to recognize you personally, you can beat me after the ceremony. But there are certainly a few that have to be recognized today. Uh, first to my brother in arms, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, Dave. Uh, let me just start by saying thank you for sending the best of the best to Indopaycom. Madam Secretary, good to see you and your husband. Thanks for coming. It's really incredible. Where's General Suzuki? Raise your hand. Suzuki-san, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming out to recognize your brother in arms and our great team. There's a variety of ally and partner support who made it all the way to witness and recognize Cruiser as well as Gumby, but also from Japan, General uh, Azuzu. Sir, good to see you. General Marumo and spouses by the way, so this is a family event. General Goku Yamada, thank you for coming. Major General Kim from the Republic of Korea Air Force, thank you for spending time today with us. And to the rest of the allies and partners that have arrived. General Bramlett and Nora, I know you're always at these events, so my welcome and thanks to you for coming today and recognizing it. Sir, good to see you both. The Consular and Diplomatic Corps, who are critical to our actions and activities here on Oahu, thank you for spending time with us. I also have the greatest fighting force of commanders that exists on the planet. The combatant, my combatant command components are all here today supporting their brother. Thank you guys for coming today as well. To the Hawaii leadership and the community that always supports us and our sailors, service members, and families, thank you for coming today. And as I said, the most important group that's here today are the members and team of the Pacific Air Forces. Thank you for all you do each and every day. Okay, Cruiser's interesting, but let's talk about Cindy for a minute. Cindy, thank you very much. I was honored to be able to surprise Cindy with a public service award yesterday for her tremendous effort in taking care of airmen around the Pacific, half the globe, 33 nations. Uh, your tireless efforts, Cindy, and support for Cruiser cannot go unmentioned. And in my notes, somebody told me uh, in a 40-year career, 23 moves around the globe. Cindy, I can't thank you enough for all you've done. That said, your job's not done either. You've got to go take care of ACC. So we're going to miss you. Thank you very much for your dedicated sacrifice and service to our nation. Please, a round of applause. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about Cruiser just for a second. But when I said before that that uh, Dave sends the best of the best out here, boy, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, well, why could that be? Why does he keep sending the greatest airmen on the planet to the Pacific? And, then I, and I went back and I looked at it. Well, number one, we have the most challenging set of adversaries. 
Number two, we cover the largest span, half the globe. And as a theater joint force air component commander, he's responsible to provide combat air power across half the globe at an instant's call. And I went back and I'm like, well, that was easy, except then I realized why they really are the greatest. They're both the sons of Navy, uh, Navy families. Both of their dads were in the Navy. Madam Secretary, thank you very much. Uh, all kidding aside, service is, goes strong in both their families. For Cruiser, uh, I can't thank you enough for all you've done for the team. Three years ago, when I got here, we got here almost together. We worked to integrate the joint force you drove air combat power to be able to be delivered anywhere, anytime. You've moved forward on the, on the ACE concept to be able to be successful in this theater. And for everyone who was here for the last, what seemed like 50 days, but was I guess about 10, we just completed the largest, most complex exercise called Keen Edge. And we did that with our partners from Japan and Australia. And I've been in this theater, I've been here six years straight, and I've been here for eight of the last nine years, or ten years, in this theater doing this work. And it was the greatest demonstration of what a integrated, synchronized joint force can do, enabled by joint air power, integrating all domain operations, undersea, on the sea, above the sea, on the land, in space, and in cyberspace. It was incredible to watch. And the leadership of the component commanders, the leadership of my Japanese and Australian partners, and the leadership of the theater air component commander was flawless. I can't thank you enough. Now, Cruiser's going to leave us, but his job is not done, just like I said for Cindy. So the Air Force understands how important Cruiser can be to this fighting formation and he's gonna send them back to ACC to be able to continue to contribute to the joint air power that's needed and for the next wave of leaders that will end up out here as well. Cruiser, we go back a long way. It's been fun, I'm gonna miss you. The fact that you're still gonna go fly I, makes me hate you, but I'm jealous and I can't thank you enough for being a great partner. A round of applause for Cruiser, please. Gumby, Lori, welcome back. Again, the best of the best. Now, from when you were here last time, it is not the same. The adversary has changed, the environment has changed, our forces changed, and guess what? Nothing got easier. So, I can't be more happy to have you both back out here I do want to recognize Megan, Gumby's sister. Thank you for coming out, taking care of mom and dad. Mike and Maureen, Gumby's parents, it's great to see you. Thanks for all you've done to develop that and give them back to me. Thank you very much. Let me make sure that I recognize Annalise and Abby as well. Uh, I always say this every time. So Gumby raised his right hand and swore an oath. None of you did, but we've asked a lot of you. Thank you for your sacrifices. Uh, we talk about moving around 13 moves for Lori and 12 for the girls. That is a challenge that uh, very few understand, uh, but let there be no doubt, he would not be here today if it were not for you. So, for the Schneider family, welcome. Thank you, and let's give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Lori, your deep service uh, is also commendable, and we thank you. Uh, we will ask more of you to take care of airmen around Pacific Air Force AOR. So welcome. You're going to get a lot of miles under your belt. All right, Gumby, welcome back. It's good to have you here. Your experience in this theater was critical for us, knowing what you're about to take on. And like I said, it is different from when you left, whether it be from USFJ 
or from the chief of staff position at Indo-PACOM, uh, but it, boy, it is on the right trajectory. So I'm ready for you to take us to new heights and synchronize and pull together, continue to integrate the joint force. Link it with our allies and partners and there's no one that can stop us. The guidance remains the same. Deliver air combat power to the joint force whenever needed. I know you're gonna be relentless in the pursuit of this goal. You know what it looks like, you know how to do it. I'm happy to have you back on the team. Lastly, to the entire, entire JFAC team and PACAF team, thank you for everything you do each and every day for your nation and for our joint force. Uh, again, I'm honored to serve amongst each and every one of you, and thank you very much for all you do. Congratulations to you both. Thanks. Thank you, Admiral Aquilino. The Chief of Staff, United States Air Force, General David W. Alvin. Well, good morning. I had the great honor earlier this morning of promoting Gumby to four-star general, and that was a very, very proud moment. But I really want to thank, uh, first of all, Chaplain Hamill for the invocation, uh, for amongst other things. I've known Chaplain Hamill for, for a couple decades now, but in fact, reminding everyone that Will's box first name is Ken and Snyder's first name is Kevin. Because I'm afraid if we said we're gonna pass the guide on from, from Ken to Kevin, people would know what we're doing. But we know Ms. Cruiser and Gumby, but they're both fine leaders and have been uh, the best that our Air Force has to offer. I won't repeat, but I want to echo Admiral Aquilino's appreciation. This is family business and it starts with the personal family, extends to the Air Force family, extends to our joint family, extends to our interagency family, to our allies and partners, and to the local community. This is family business. And we're all here because we know what's at stake. And we know we have to get this right. So I could not be more proud to stand here in front of you today and oversee this transition. Let's talk about transition for a minute. Transition is a movement from one to another. And inherent in transition, is a gap or a seam. You have to shift from one to another, or at least that's the definition. My responsibility to the commander of Interpaycom Command is to make that transition as seamless as possible. Why? Because securing a free and open Indo-Pacific and advancing our national defense strategy and our national security interests is not seasonal business. This is not something you can do, take a break from, and come back to and pick it up later. The stakes are too high. The challenges are too great. The opportunities may be too fleeting. And if we miss that opportunity because we're adjusting, because of our transition, I believe we're failing our Air Force, we're failing our combatant commands, we're failing our nation. But I can tell you right now, I stand here today and say I feel very confident that transition is going to be as smooth as possible. It's going to be as smooth as one can imagine because of the caliber and the quality of the leadership that is currently in the position and the leadership that's going to take over that position. You know, Admiral Aquilino, who, by the way, if you don't know, is a demanding combatant commander, rightfully so. He puts his heart and soul and energy into making sure that people understand what's at stake. And so when he speaks so, so highly of Cruiser Wilsbach, you can believe it. And of course, as, as always, he mentions it correctly, it's not just Cruiser, it's a team. It's a team. And what that team has done is really advanced this command in support of the combatant command at a critical time. You know, as we're adjusting to the national defense strategy and adjusting our Air Force and our Joint Force to meet the challenges, there are new concepts required, new schemes of maneuver that we need to investigate and mature and bring to the field. And one of those, as Admiral Aquilino mentioned, was as a combat employment. It's a new approach. It's the path to the future. But when Cruiser took over, it was just starting to be beyond a concept, but not really implementable, other than an idea with some good thought behind it. Well, that was on him. He had to advance that. He and his team need to move that forward. And I will tell you, they have done a remarkable job. 
for me, advocating for the resources in a building that was like blood out of a turnip to get extra money, but advocating and showing the rationale behind the things needed to make agile uh, combat employment real, that was on his leadership. And developing the concepts and maturing them in a way that we can now see it. Now we know we have more work to do, but without his work, we wouldn't secure the one plus billion dollars that's going to support that scheme of maneuver. That is critical for the air component to support Indo-PACOM in this theater. That was Cruiser. That was his team. That was his leadership. But Cruiser and Cindy also know this is, again, it's family business. You can have all the stuff in the world, but if you don't have the team that feels the team, the families, all of them behind you, and able to, to live in a manner befitting them, then you've missed the boat. At the end, it's people who do the business. And their advocacy for uncomfortable things like additional attention to mental health, understanding pediatric psychology, and those are the things that keep a family together in a challenging time. They championed that in a way that has been best practiced throughout our Air Force. And we actually stole a couple of the ideas that they piloted here in PACAP and are accepting them to be the standard practice in our United States Air Force. This is family business. The people we see in front of them and the families who make them successful, that was championed by Team Wilsbach. Could not be more proud. He also knows it's about joint teamwork, assembling the component commanders together to develop a battle rhythm to enable us to understand things as a joint team and not get disconnected in a manner that is unbefitting of what the combatant commander requires of the service components. That's the leadership of Cruiser Wilsbach. Allies and partners. Pacific Air Chief Symposium, which I was uh, honored to be able to participate, showed that there is an appreciation and understanding of the strengths and opportunities that exist in the allies and partners in this theater towards a common goal. To bring that out, to elevate that, is something that Cruiser did with a plum. It was amazing. All those things have advanced this command in support of Indopaycom, have made PACAF a leading command in understanding the future of warfare and how the air component fits into that. That's a remarkable feat, Cruiser. That is amazing. And you and Cindy have done a fantastic job at that. And that's why we're not done with you yet. They got more gas in the tank. So as Admiral Ackley said, we're bringing them back to Command Air Combat Command. Who better? If this is the theater in which the pacing challenge exists, who better to come back and understand what readiness needs to be, where, how much, when, than someone who's just come from the theater. Our Air Force is going to greatly benefit from your experience and your energy and your capacity to continue to lead. And I thank you so much for that. So transition. In a relay race, a 4 by 100 relay race, sometimes it's, it's measured in tenths of seconds of who wins and who loses, sometimes maybe hundreds which means you can have the fastest runners in the world, but if they cannot pass the baton smoothly, that's the difference. And we cannot afford to miss any opportunities to maintain momentum in this theater with the challenges here and the primacy that we have in the Indo-Pacific. So Team Schneider is perfect. As Admiral Ackwilliner said, they have experience here. To put a finer point on it, out of every three years that Kevin Gumby Schneider has served in our Air Force, out of every three years, over one of them has been in this theater. There's several installations throughout, several commands throughout. He gets the theater. He understands the value of the partnerships that need to be sustained and enhanced. He understands air power in the Pacific. He also understands the building. He understands the Pentagon, the challenges, and sometimes the frustrations, but he also he also understands that there is a way that one can work with the Pentagon to ensure that we continue the momentum to provide what this theater needs. And he and Lawyer are going to do that in fine fashion, I have no doubt. If not, we would have looked elsewhere, but we need not look elsewhere because this is the transition team. The baton will be passed smoothly. I'm Aquilino. We will not slow down. We will not have disruption. Momentum is key, and this is the team to do it. So again, I could not be more proud to stand here today at this place in this time of consequence 
to be able to pass the baton from one fantastic leader to another as we continue to journey to help defend our nation. Thank you very much. Congratulations to both of you. And let's get on with the change plan. Thank you, General Alvin. Please stand as General Alvin presents the Distinguished Service Medal to General Wilsbach. The President of the United States of America, authorized by an act of Congress July 9, 1918, awards the Distinguished Service Medal to General Kenneth S. Wilsbach for exceptionally meritorious service in duties of great responsibility. General Wilsbach distinguished himself as Commander Pacific Air Forces and Joint Forces Air Component Commander for United States Indo-Pacific Command, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, Hawaii from 8 July 2020 to 9 February 2024. During this period, General Wilsbach led 44,000 airmen across three numbered air forces, 10 wings and 15 locations in support of the Department of Defense's largest geographic combatant command. In response to growing coercion from the Indo-Pacific General Wilsbach redefined the command's contribution to the Indo-Pacific theory of victory, which substantially changed the Air Force narrative, its resourcing strategy, and its operational exercise focus, as well as furthered the integration of allies into an operationally relevant force. His actions and leadership reinforced deterrence and identified the criticality of kill webs, anti-ship warfare, and agile combat employment. General Wilsbach's constant and consistent advocacy energized the United States Air Force enterprise compelling substantial investment, changes in munitions, air superiority, and kill web portfolios. His advocacy also drove the Air Force Warfare Center to develop essential tactics, techniques, and procedures in support of the theory of victory. General Wilsbach also underpinned the service's agile combat employment concept, delivering initial operational capability, improving an array of airfields, and securing substantial war materiel investments in support of operations plans. Just as critically, General Wilsbach led a substantial growth in allies and partners' integration into the command exercises and activities, forging a more cohesive coalition air component. Together, his extraordinary accomplishments and vision for the future postured air forces to be ready to deter or prevail in major conflict and ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of General Wilsbach reflect the highest credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of the Air Force. gentlemen, please be seated. The Commander, Pacific Air Forces, General Wilsbach. Aloha. Well, before I get started, Gumby, better late than never. Whew. I know you've been anxious for this day, and uh, while you've been anxious, we've been enjoying what you see in front of you. Uh, and so it's, it's all about perspectives, isn't it? Uh, but uh, what a beautiful morning. Um, it's so good to uh, be here uh, with everybody. Thanks uh, for all of you attending. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, Chief, uh, wish Gina was here with you. Uh, glad that Skip is here. And uh, Admiral Aquilino, glad you brought uh, Laura and Jess over uh, to the ceremony. Uh, to uh, my fellow component commanders uh, over here, which I'm going to talk about here in a bit, as well as other flag and general officers. And, uh, and we have some flag and general officers from uh, several other countries here, and your presence here uh, means a lot to General Snyder and I, and so thank you for being here, uh, both active duty and retired. Um, and then, of course, uh, the men and women in formation, representing all the men and women in PACAF, um, and especially uh, the senior enlisted chiefs that are here as well, I want to recognize, but uh, thank you. It's been the honor of my life and a huge blessing uh, for Cindy to be able to serve here for the past three and a half years. And if you would just uh, indulge me a bit, I have a few thank yous uh, to, to get through. And so, uh, first of all, to um, our Secretary of the Air Force, as well as um, the three of the current chief and the two previous chiefs, uh, thank you for uh, letting me uh, serve here. 
and uh, just giving me such a privilege uh, to be able to uh, lead the, uh, the men and women of PACAF. And to Admiral Aquilino, uh, same. Thanks for letting me uh, lead here, but uh, more importantly, uh, thank you for your bold leadership. Y you're right. When, when we first started this thing, it was different, and now it's not. And the reason it's not is because of your leadership. And, and we're in a much better place to address the challenges in this theater than we were before. And that's all, that's all on you. And uh, we thank you for your leadership. And we thank you uh, for uh, you and Laura's service um, all these years. And um, it's, it's been a pleasure serving with you uh, in the Pacific and uh, taking on a, a big challenge. Um, I do want to uh, start off with one other thanks early in my thank yous is to, to thank Cindy. And uh, the team has, uh, has something, if you could uh, bring that forward for Cindy. But um, I, I just wanted to uh, thank you for all the service uh, that you've um, exhibited the whole time we've been married, because I've been in the Air Force the whole time. And um, I just wanted to uh, just acknowledge um, your service uh, while we've been here and the number of events that we've had um, at our house. Um, if you've been to our house, you know it's um, a hospitality fair uh, and you know that, uh, uh, you may not know, but it's uh, Cindy's behind all of that. So the menu, uh, the decorations, the theme, uh, everything about uh, the event is all, is all in her mind. And she does that because she wants to honor our guests. It's her way of honoring you when you come to our house. And there was hundreds of those uh, types of events. Uh, and, uh, and, and then the traveling. And uh, as you might know, all of us, uh, as a part of our jobs, uh, travel, and um, she's representing our country. Uh, now, she gets a huge salary for that, right? Um, so she's doing that all um, via gratis, and, uh, and you're serving your country because you love me, uh, you love um, our service and our country, um, and um, you, uh, you just did that with such grace and elegance, and I just want to thank you. And I know we applauded you earlier and would like to do that again. Thank you. I would also like to thank the uh, team that put this together, uh, the maintenance guys that towed all the jets over. They look fantastic. To Lieutenant Colonel Hours, who is the project officer in your team. I don't know where you got off to, but uh, thank you for, for leading uh, the ceremony and putting it together. These are always uh, hard to do. And then our protocol team, you know, no, no offense, you guys over here, but the PACAF protocol is the best, best protocol team uh, on the planet. And unfortunately, Robin, our uh, chief of protocol, is out today, um, and we wish her well. Um, but um, she leads an amazing, amazing team, and uh, they've done a great job. I'd also like to thank the uh, numbered Air Force commanders uh, that are here today, uh, Lieutenant General Ricky Rupp and Charlotte. What a great team uh, leading our Air Forces in Japan. And he's also the U.S. Forces Japan commander, and they're just the, r the right team at the right time uh, in Japan for us, and they're doing a great job. Um, and then also uh, Poison Iverson, Jenny's uh, still back in uh, Korea, um, but uh, he's been leading there for just over a week, and so he's already got everything fixed, and, uh, and, but doing a great job, and also the right guy in, in Korea. Uh, and then um, also um, Abu Nahom, Lieutenant General Abu Nahom, and his wife Kim uh, up in Alaska, but uh, really uh, commanding all of our forces in Alaska, Hawaii, and Guam. Uh, just an uh, innovative, bold leader, uh, doing you know, a lot of the things that we talked about with ACE, that, that came out of 11th Air Force, a lot of it. Um, and so he's doing a, he, he and Kim are doing a great job uh, up there. And then all the wing commanders that are associated with all uh, those numbered Air Forces, those wing commanders and their senior enlisted leaders, they're the ones who are doing all the hard work. So uh, those operations that uh, you have us doing, Admiral, they're the ones they're the ones executing, and they're doing it uh, with, with such amazing professionalism. And then our staff at the headquarters, um, I tell them all the time that people come to me and they tell me, boy, the PACAF staff is really a good staff. And um, I, I tell them I know. I work with them every day. And uh, that kind of a reputation when other people 
you know, travel to your staff or when they, you know, they, they interact with them from somewhere else and they, they get the sense that um, they're, they're about getting the job done, but they're about collaborating and cooperation, uh, that, that's really healthy for the staff and I'm appreciative of them. Um, to uh, Lieutenant General Jacobson and Air Vice Marshal Newman, the two uh, PACAF deputy commanders, uh, thank you guys. Uh, amazing deputies, and um, I was TDY a fair amount, and uh, they, you know, they, they had the stick, and they were flying the jet while I was gone, and uh, there was never a question. Uh, you guys are that good, and you, you might have noticed the maybe unfamiliar rank, Air Vice Marshal Newman, is not from the U.S. He's from Australia, and um, that's the first time that PACAF has ever had a deputy commander from another country. Um, and uh, just stating that you have a deputy commander is the easiest part. You know, incorporating uh, somebody from another country and uh, allowing them to have access to the information that was the hard part. And we we tackled a lot of that uh, uh, during the time that Air Vice Marshal Newman uh, was here, and I'm I'm greatly. Uh, thankful that you're here and um, like I said last night uh, on this first day we proved out the reason why we wanted to do this and um, he continued to do that every single day and so uh, Billy thanks uh, for being here well um, I'd also like to thank uh, my fellow component commanders and I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenges in this theater here in a bit um, but if you've heard of inter-service rivalries they don't happen here. They're, they're not existent in this theater. And we, the PAC fleet commander, Admiral Paparo, the USAR PAC commander, General Flynn, the MAR-4 PAC uh, commander, General Journey, and the Space Force uh, commander, uh, General Mastelier, we're tight. So let me just uh, give a message to anybody that um, would ever think about challenging us. We're tight, don't mess with us. And uh, I, I just want to thank you guys uh, for the collaboration and uh, for the cooperation and getting along and, and uh, executing what the boss had us to do. And um, I tell people often that I've been in this theater for more than 20 years of my career and we've never been more joint. That's a good thing. And uh, we used to, you know, do things that uh, were maybe on the same day in a different spot and we'd say, yeah, it was a joint operation when it really wasn't integrated. Well, it's 100% integrated now and there's massive strength in that and it's, it's because of those guys that are sitting over there and their, their dedication to their, their own component but also the dedication to us as a team. Uh, so, fellas, uh, it's been an honor to serve with you and thank, thank you uh, for your cooperation. Well, a little bit about the theater, and then I'll, I'll close. But uh, and and really, if you if you just think about the theater, you only have part of the of the story because in the last year and a half or so, the the world has become a, a very dangerous place. And we, we all know the headlines between Russia and Ukraine, um, Israel and Hamas. It's now boiled over, um, you know, to uh, Yemen and other places. Uh, and in the meantime. You know, we, we have uh, significant challenges in this theater. Um, you, you can start with North Korea. Of course, Russia is a Pacific uh, nation as well. Uh, there's issues in the Arctic. Uh, there's even forces in Antarctica. You might not know that, but we have airmen that are on the ice today. Um, and then, of course, we have China. And China's been very clear about their intent. Uh, their writings and their rhetoric are such that they want to control Taiwan. They'd love to do it uh, peacefully, but they'll do it by force if they have to. And if you've watched what they've been doing with their military, they've been preparing to do it by force. And our job is to convince them that that's not a good idea. It's called deterrence. And um, I'm very proud to say that um, in the differences that you talked about, Admiral Aquilino, um, I believe that we're offering that deterrence. And, um, and I know that uh, General Snyder, uh, under his leadership, will continue to take PACAF in, in that direction. But it's not just us. I've talked about our joint team here, but our allies and partners, and some of them are represented here, um, they make a huge difference. And they're like-minded with us. And I think you all know that. They want a free and open Indo-Pacific just like we do, um, and they're with us on that. And uh, we see that in exercises, we see that in conferences, 
They're sending their best here to participate. Uh, they're sending uh, their top line troops and units to exercise with us. They want to be interoperable with us, and in, in most cases, they are. And uh, we've been working on that for the last three years, and I know, Gumby, you're going to continue. Uh, and, and the last aspect, and it's been mentioned before, but um, this, this notion of agile combat employment, and um, all of the components have a version of this. The Air Force one is called agile combat employment, but when I first got here, right after we declared initial operating capability, and we didn't quit there, and we're not going to stop. Uh, we're going to continue to expand uh, that uh, envelope, and it's the, the men and women of PACAP and their innovation and their leadership at the at very low levels. And, and we pushed down that um, authority to captains and tech sergeants. We kicked them out to islands and said, lead it, make it happen, and they're doing it. And it's extremely impressive. And so it's been, it's been really fun to watch, and I've been so impressed with that uh, innovation and, and leadership. Well, as I close, um, I, I told General Snyder uh, earlier, and you, you may or may not know this, but the PACAF commander doesn't get to decide who their successor is. You know, that's the chief and that's the secretary. Uh, but if I could have picked my successor, I would have picked General Snyder. Uh, and uh, he and Lori have so much uh, experience here in the theater. Uh, he's he's uh, served in Japan, he served in Korea. He served here uh, on the island in various commands, and um, he has the experience to be able today uh, to start taking this command to newer, higher, higher heights, and I know you'll do that. And um, I'm so thankful uh, for y'all's service, uh, and I'm glad that we're passing uh, the flag today uh, to somebody who's ready, who's ready. And so we're so happy for you. Well, listen, everybody, thanks again for uh, coming out. Uh, uh, thanks uh, to the men and women of PACAF uh, for uh, supporting me, their commander. It has been the honor of my life. Um, I wish everyone the best, and I say God bless America and God bless you. Thank you. The men and women of the Pacific Air Forces are honored to salute our commander, General Wilsbach, for the last time. The Pacific Air Force's command would like to say mahalo nui loa to Mrs. Wilsbach for her dedication and many contributions to PACAP airmen, spouses, and their families. She will now be presented a token of appreciation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command ceremony and the command chief assumption of responsibilities. Attention to order. According to special order number GK160, General Kevin B. Schneider assumes command of a Pacific Air Forces effective 9 February 2024 by order of General David W. Alvin, Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force and the Department of the Air Force Headquarters, Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. General Schneider will receive his first salute from the command.
Ladies and gentlemen, General Kevin B. Schneider, Commander, Pacific Air Forces. Hey, Jack, so I'm going to violate the uh, manual on drill and ceremony. Just have the team shake it out for about 30 seconds. Reset to your current positions, if you would. I have stood on this floor a few times in Hangar 19. I know it's not an easy thing. But yeah, just take 30 seconds and I, I will start talking again. And like an awesome commander of troops, he actually just checked his watch. Thank you for doing that. You look really sharp. I just want to start by saying thank you to Secretary Kendall, to General Brown, and General Alvin for your faith and trust in me, and for selecting me to be the commander of Pacific Air Forces. It is an honor and it is an awesome privilege to take the reins of this command and to lead the airmen that do so much across the expanse of this theater. And the responsibilities and the critical importance of PACAS mission are not lost on me. I also want to express my thanks to Admirals Harris, Admirals Davidson, Admiral Aquilino, the three commanders during my tenure at PACOM and Indo-PACOM. Your leadership, your counsel, and your access afforded me an unmatched education about warfighting, about deterrence, and the importance of allies and partners, and I still take lessons from that education to this day. I thank you for all the doors that you opened for me in my career, and I recognize that without the time, both at, up on the hill at Camp Smith and at U.S. Forces Japan, I probably would not be standing here today. So thank you very much. I also want to offer my sincere thanks to the PACAP commanders that I worked with directly for and with in recent years, General Lori Robinson, General T.J. O'Shaughnessy, General C.Q. Brown, Jr., and General Ken Wilsbach. You have all evolved this command and the capabilities of our incredible airmen in the face of growing challenges throughout the Indo-Pacific region, and I have been tremendously fortunate to watch you lead and to learn from your collective successes, and I will always appreciate the time you have spent teaching me but more so than that, I will always value the friendship. And General Wilsbach, I am in awe of all you have done in your tenure, and words really cannot do justice to the impact that he has had on the region. Three and a half years, over three and a half years as the PACAF commander, and then four years as numbered Air Force commanders, both in Alaska and Korea before that. Obviously, my biggest challenge is, is to keep up with the pace that you have set and living up to your standard of excellence. You leave very large shoes to fill, but thank you for that. I wish you and Cindy all the best as you head east to Langley Air Force Base, and I look forward to working with you as you assume command at Air Combat Command later this month. And to the many other friends who I have worked with and learned from over the years, some of you going back 40 years, I am truly honored by your attendance today. You make a special day even more so special. I also want to thank our wonderful hosts in our local communities here on Oahu, and we recognize the efforts that you make for us, and it is appreciated. Being good guests requires us to do right by those who offer up their homes on our behalf. I want you to know that your concerns are our concerns and your successes are our cause for celebration. Thank you for your continued support. And the last on my list of thank yous, it's actually first on the list of importance, and that's to my dad, Mike, to my mom, Maureen, to my sister, Meg. Thank you for all that you have done to love and support me over the years. I would not be here today without the countless sacrifices you have made for me since the day I was born. And you set amazing examples with work ethic, character, faith, compassion. And to my wife, Lori, and our girls, Annalise and Abby, I just cannot say enough. You are the ones who have borne the burden of PCS moves, TDYs, combat deployments, remote tours, countless missed family events. Lori has given up her professional career multiple times to take care of me and to raise two additional children into, uh, along the way. Uh, my dad recently reminded that it's easy for me to Google, or someone can Google me up on the, on the internet, look at my bio, look at things that I have done, and the same necessarily isn't true for Lori. Lori's work, her impacts, her sacrifices will not show up on an internet search, but they are far more consequential than mine. So to my lovely wife and amazing children, your love and unending support has kept me going and allowed me to pursue this course. Thank you for letting me wear the uniform.
Thank you for letting me serve the nation, and thank you for putting up with me. So in November of 1990, First Lieutenant Schneider arrived at Osan Air Base, first operational assignment. While the mission of my squadron was laser focused on the DPRK, we still paid attention to the region's issues and the security challenges. And that squadron deployed, we went to the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, Alaska, Japan. And we worked hard with the ROCAP at home station, but we also flew and trained with air forces from around the Western Pacific in events like Cope Thunder, Red Flag Alaska, while finding every opportunity for bilateral deployments, buddy wing exchanges, cross-servicing engagements to develop our skills. And since that first tour in 1990, I have served in the Indo-Pacific many times, and over the decades, I have watched the security situation in the region change. It has become more interconnected. It has become more challenging. It has become more severe. And it now carries a far higher potential for volatility. And that is because we face actors today who work to undermine that rules-based international order. They do it through economic coercion, political bullying, and military aggression. And the costs and impacts of those malign actions can be significant for those around the region. It comes with loss of sovereignty. It comes with loss of transparency in government, loss of economic freedoms, and encroachment on human rights. I am no economist. My grades from the academy will prove that. But I am aware enough to see the positive impacts of a free and open Indo-Pacific. That rules-based order, underwritten by the presence and the actions of the United States military and those of our allies and partners, have been in place for 80 years, enabling an unprecedented amount of peace and global prosperity. As General Alvin talks about back in the Pentagon, this is a time of great consequence. And it's not just for PACAF, not just for the United States Air Force. It is a time of consequence for this region and the world. And the actions we take now to ensure stability and deter aggression in the face of multiple growing challenges will have far-reaching and long-lasting impacts. But we do not do this work alone. The Allied and partner air forces we team with in the Indo-Pacific go stronger and more capable each day. A former PACOM commander used to remind visitors to the headquarters up at Camp Smith that our number one asymmetric advantage in the United States military is the network of allies and partners of which we are a part. Those who seek to challenge us can never match it. They can only envy it. Our ability to work together has evolved from basic coordination to high-end interoperability in complex scenarios and I've been fortunate enough to participate in that mutual learning curve since that first assignment in Korea and the following one in Japan. And our collective work together as airmen makes a difference far beyond what we could do as individual Air Forces. And I look forward to working with Air Force leaders who call the Indo-Pacific home, as well as those from abroad who continue to do more in this region. And I'd, I would be remiss if I did not make a comment to the Joint Force teammates here in Hawaii and around the region. I am grateful and honored be part of this outstanding formation once again. The second asymmetric advantage we enjoy in the military is our ability to overcome any challenge to the strength of the joint force, something that we have done successfully time and time again across the spectrum of conflict. And to Admiral Aquilino and the team at Camp Smith, to the component brethren of PAC Fleet, User PAC, Mar 4 PAC, SOC PAC, Space 4 Indo PAC, and to the subunified commanders at U.S. Forces Korea and U.S. Forces Japan, I look forward to building on that already strong teamwork that makes Indo-PACOM a pillar of stability. And then finally, to the men and women of Pacific Air Forces, the officers, the enlisted, civilians, active duty, guard, and reserve, it is the honor of a lifetime to be part of this team once again. Having spent a third of my career and over a third of my life in the Indo-Pacific, this feels like coming home, because it is. PACAF is where I learned to be a mission-ready fighter pilot, developing the warfighting skills and deep appreciation for tactical teamwork that carried me throughout my career. PACAF is where I learned to command as a fighter squadron commander, where we all lived and breathed warfighting readiness 24-7, 365. PACAF is where I learned about operational integration with joint teammates and the rest of the U.S. government through, through other command opportunities. And PACAF is where I learned the value of strategic partnership and the strength of alliances. This is a time of consequence for the Air Force and, much, and for our nation, and much of that rests on the shoulders of PACAF airmen. But I have absolute faith in the abilities of our airmen to do the hard work, to solve the tough issues, and to continue to deter those who attempt to undermine peace and stability. My commitment to you, PACAF, is that I will give you the direction that you need to get after the mission that makes us part of the greatest Air Force in the world, and that I will run as hard and as fast as I ask you to. Thank you very much.
Thank you, General Schneider. To extend a warm aloha to Mrs. Schneider, the men and women of PACAP will now present her with a token of welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party and our distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the change of command ceremony. On behalf of the men and women of the Pacific Air Forces, thank you for joining us and have a glorious day.